Turn the heat off. <laughs> Put the doors out the door. I need to get it done before Christmas. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got it done. We got to you know, change our whole front door and those little double doors. Okay. And uh, steel door. Mm-hmm. And we probably won't ever have to replace it again. What y'all doing? Doing it leaking? No, the sun. Yeah, that's what they're that doing. That's what they're doing in mind. That that's why the glue and stuff keep peeling out here. That's why we don't have steel. Yeah, because the wood ain't gonna do you no good yeah. either. It'll start cracking. Yep. That's what I was doing. The panels are cracking. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it lasts it. It's five before we got there now. It's five to last. It lasts it almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, if we get it steel, it'll be there. I hope I live a long time, but it'll be there when we be gone. <clears throat> well, we say good morning, praise the Lord, and uh, Merry Christmas to those uh, who are viewing with us. We are indeed grateful on this uh, Sunday morning in which we recognize uh, the birth of Christ. We're not saying this is the day that he was born. <laughs> we simply say this is the day that mm -hmm. the world recognizes Christ's birth. Um, so we are grateful uh, because of the Lord uh, loved us so that he came in the likeness of who we are, sinful flesh, but without sin. And taking the sins of the world upon himself, he came into the world that uh, we might uh, again have a right to the tree of life. So we're grateful to him and all of his mighty works. We understand that it is out of the abundant mercy of God that uh, 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 long and extended grace of God that he has allowed us the privilege to even be able to come and to share out of the word of God with you. So uh, we bless you and as always we ask that you grab pencil and paper and uh, you can jot down what the Lord gives us as we give it to you. Always we honor the man of God here in this house. To Pastor Rogers, uh, we're so grateful to the Lord for him. As always, we bless God for being brothers in Christ, uh, that God has blessed us, uh, that we might share in a ministry. Certainly, we understand clearly, um, and but we praise God for him and the ability that he gives unto us or the privilege that he gives unto us. We also uh, honor our elect lady uh, to Sister Loretta Rogers and uh, to my uh, wife, Sister Crystal, and uh, to all of those that are present and those that are following us uh, this morning. We praise God for each and every one of you. And as we give it over to our pastor, he will greet you and uh, bring us into our Sunday school lesson. And we say praise the Lord, good morning, and Merry Christmas to all too. And we thank God for another opportunity and privilege that God has afforded us to come before you to give what he has given unto us and to uh, allow us to come into your home to spend a little bit of this Christmas Amen. along with you. And we Amen. thank God for that. And we thank God for his goodness and his mercy. And we just ask you to pray along with us and for us 
as we go into this lesson that we have a deeper and a better understanding what Christmas is about and what the purpose is and what our role that we play even in these Christmases that God bless us to be a part of that we don't become so commercialized but we recognize who and what Christmas is all about because if it was not for Jesus mm -hmm. there would be no Christmas at all. so actually just go along with us pray along with us as we go into this lesson for December the 25th 2022 with our uh theme for this week is Christmas Sunday and with our topic worshiping with the shepherds and the wise men with our focus verse coming from Matthew chapter 2 verse 11 and when they were coming to the house they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worship him and and when they had opened their treasures they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and mirth lesson text coming from Matthew 2 and 11 also Luke 2 15 through 17 truth about God God came, God came to be accessible to everyone. Truth for my life, I will worship God no matter my life station. No, excuse me. I will worship God no matter my station in life. Our icebreaker, what is the most unique nativity scene you have ever seen? Our lesson outline, worshiping with the shepherds. The shepherds left their flocks behind when they came to Jesus. I will leave things behind when I come to Jesus. Worshiping, worshiping with the wise men. The wise men brought gifts when they came to Jesus. I will bring my gifts when I come to Jesus. Father, it is in your holy and wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. We come just to say thank you, Father, for blessing us and allowing us to be a part of another Christmas day, another day that we hadn't seen and will never see again. We thank you, O oh God, for your grace and your, your mercy and your strength in our lives. We thank you for the presence of mind. We thank you, God, for allowing us to know and understand what Christmas is all about. And we come to honor and to worship you. Bless today, Lord, over yes. as I always ask you to open ears, hearts, and minds, that they may receive this word that you have prepared for them this day. Not only for them, but for us also, God, that we too are learning as we go through these lessons. So you bless and you have your way, that you may be glorified and your name will be praised. And we will honor you in this day, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As always, we're grateful uh, to Pastor for bringing us in to our Sunday School lesson and blessing us with topics and the thoughts that we should be considering as we study uh, this lesson. We have an outline to our lesson uh, which kind of invokes us to thinking about all that the Lord Jesus has done for us. You know, we talk about uh, Christmas and we exchange gifts mm -hmm. uh, to each other. I'm gonna ask a uh, pastor, uh, when we start Sunday school, or when we start in the mornings, we start with prayer, and then we start uh, after prayer, we share the word of God, each one of us, uh, what God has laid on our hearts, we share with each other. Uh, so I'm gonna ask pastor before I go any further to just because we, we want to set the groundwork for what this is all about because we have it twisted hmm. and we need to get it straight. Um, listen, I'm, I'm not here to talk against uh, what uh, Christmas is to you. I'm simply here to say what Christmas ought to be to all of us. Now, if you heard, first I'm going to ask him to go back through those uh, topics of study that we're going to be studying and then I'm going to ask him to share again with us the verse that he shared uh, before we uh, came online. Oh, Okay, our topic this morning is worshiping with the shepherds and the wise men. Our focus verse is coming from Matthew chapter 12, chapter 2, excuse me, verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and mirth. Our lesson text is coming from Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Also Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Truth about God. God came to be accessible to everyone. Truth for my life. I will worship God no matter my life, my stations in life. My scripture verse this morning was uh, Romans chapter 12. Verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. 
Amen. So now we do understand what we're studying, but uh, the deeper part of that is what we present. The present of God or presence of present of God mm -hmm. has already been presented to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But now it's up to us mm -hmm. to present a present to him. And what pastor just gave us in Romans 12 and 1 tells us explicitly what we should offer. Nothing wrapped in paper, hmm. right? Nothing in an envelope. You know, again, he says what? Present your bodies. your bodies. This is what the Lord is asking us for. Uh, I, I want to share uh, from our, our Bible study uh, this with you this morning. First of all, uh, the lesson uh, defines for us worship. Um, and it says, worship is to regard with great or extravagant respect, honor, devotion. Now, this is, I mean, this is not new. This is not anything that God is asking us for anew. It was from the beginning. When you truly worship God in the beauty of holiness, you simply are obedient mm -hmm. to what God has called us to do. That is what worship is. Um, and, and then uh, it says this. Worship shared. It says, for worship is the submission, that uh, obedience. It is the submission of all our nature to God. You know, we, uh, we, 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 we have to understand. Um, I'm, I'm going to read this verse, <laughs> but, but I, I don't want you. I, I want it to be read in the context of our study. Malachi 3 and 10 says, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings, that there shall not be room enough to receive. Now, I'm not talking to you necessarily about tithing, I'm telling you about what God wants, the obedience of bringing, following his commandments, his laws, his statutes, doing the things that uh, he has required of us, and then what he says he will do. So it's that submission of all our nature to God. It is the quickening of conscience by his holiness. Remember what we were studying prior to today is what the need or the necessity of the spirit and nourishment of mind with his truth studying the word of god and purifying of imagination by his beauty when we study god's word and we understand all the great things that he's already done the opening of the heart to his love the surrendering of of will to his purpose and all of this gathered in adoration, the most selfless emotion of which our nature is capable. And therefore the chief remedy for that self-centeredness, which is our original sin and the source of all actual sin. So that means we have to do exactly what pastors say. We have to present ourselves. Mm -hmm. Forget it. You know, we sing that song, forget about ourselves, mm -hmm. concentrate on him. Mm -hmm. That's what this is all about. And again, it's talking about, our, our game teacher said, worship. Worship is not just coming together, clapping our hands, singing <laughs> and shouting hallelujah, but it's a lifestyle. Yes. It's living according to the directions and the commandments that God has given us. And the thing about it is God did not leave us wondering. God did not leave us guessing. God gave us what, uh, what was required of us to live pleasing before him. If you look in Malachi chapter uh, 6 and verse 8, and it says, He has shown thee, O man, mm -hmm. what is good and what the Lord require of thee, but to, do, but to do good justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly before our, with our God. So in other words, he's just asking us to love, to do good, 
and to walk humbly with our God, to have mercy on our fellow, uh, fellow brothers and sisters. These are things that God require of us and the commandments that he has given us that we have rules and regulations that we can walk by that will be pleasing unto God. Again, we're not living to please ourselves. We're living to please God. Teacher said again that we forget about ourselves and we concentrate on him and we do those things that he has called and ordained and have given for us to do. This is how we worship the Lord. And you know, and but you know, and one of the things my um and I, I had a little sidebar because as I was studying this, my son came into mind of years ago when he went to college. Now understand me, he, he's not worshiping me. He was honoring me because of the teachings what I gave unto him. And, and this is how we honor and worship God because of the teachings that God has given unto us. And he came back when he said, Dad, you know, at college, uh, the guys were smoking, drinking, and doing certain things. And I asked him, I said, well, Eric, did you, do, did you join in along with me? He said, no, Dad, I didn't do that. I said, why not? He said, well, I remember what you taught me. And he said, um, and I didn't want to dishonor you. I said, but I wasn't there. He said, I know that. He said, but as I was going through mm -hmm. this, it is though you were standing right by my side and I didn't want to dishonor you. He made me cry. So it made me think about myself with God. Even though God, but yeah, no, mm -hmm. God is always <laughs> with us. God is never away from us mm -hmm. and God sees everything. And that's the way we should live and that's the way we should conduct ourselves that if God is standing right by our side to see and hear, which he does, mm -hmm. everything that we do. But we feel like because God is invisible with me, because God is not close, God don't hear me, God don't see me. There was a time and Israel thought that, but they would worship in the caves because they thought God couldn't see in the cave. So I can go in my cave, I can go in my room, I can go in my closet, do the things I want to do, come back out and say, God, I love you, that, that God don't know it. No, but God knows all, God sees all, God hears all, God is present in everything. So this is a lifestyle that we live to honor him, that he may be pleased with us, that, you know, even though he sees everything, that we cannot think that he won't hear me or see me. So we're coming today to worship him, not in a form or fashion, but uh, but in spirit and in truth. That's how they say the true worshipers. And that's what we're coming to do today. So in other words, we're not so much on the nativity story. Mm -hmm. We're not so much on the baby in the manger and this and other thing. It's about us, as teachers said again, it's about us today that we learn the true meaning of Christmas, the true meaning of worship and honoring God. Amen. That's why coming up to this lesson, we've had the study of those things that brings us into understanding mm -hmm. first first that we we put things in perspective you know um you know we we we, we studied from those wisdoms mm -hmm. of, of god and then we uh, started uh the work of the spirit which is what we were studying but without the spirit um it, it's hard for us to understand uh, what god has called us mm -hmm. to do you know our, our lesson hits uh high points hits high points but again you know not to take it literally where you know i mean the, the first high point of our lesson says that worshiping with the shepherds well come on <laughs> we're, we're not we're, mm. we're i mean this is a way of worship mm -hmm. is what it's talking about not worshiping with like you know there is something that uh, the shepherds uh, uh, bring that we need to bring in that manner. But it depicts what God calls us to do. When it says we were worshiping with the shepherds, and then it went into the explanation of, of what true worship is. And the main thing we must understand is that true worship is uh, giving of ourselves all that God has called of us to give because we recognize that he gave all he had. That was his only begotten son. And it says, for the shepherds, uh, it begins, you know, for the shepherds left their flocks behind mm -hmm. when they came to Christ. Well, it's something that we try. We try uh, 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 very religiously to get you to understand that we have to. We have to, there has to be a change in our mm -hmm. lives, change in our lives. And Christ has to become more important than anything else in our lives. When it talks about shepherds, it talks about them in the way that shepherds had a great responsibility of looking after the very wealth of 
what they had. And that were, was their flocks, their herds. And, uh, but when, when the star appeared, you know, what they considered then, you know, because mm -hmm. listen, see, we, 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 we want to say quickly, well, I would be saved, but I have to stop doing this. I can't go there. I can't say this. Well, I mean, it says that the shepherds left stuff behind. Those things that you value the most in your life. You understand? You can't hold on to them if you're going to come to Christ. And, and listen, our lesson even elaborates on it. When it says leaving, this is not where leaving started. <laughs> leaving started from the beginning. It said, uh, me and Pastor, we, 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 we got a we gotta left, as my, uh, my uh, pastor's wife would say, we have to left uh -huh. what we hold on so, right. to so dearly. You know, I mean, you know, maybe there is a night of joy before the sickness of getting drunk <laughs> or, or before getting high. But then after it's mm -hmm. done, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, but you got to leave that stuff. There's a high that you can have in Christ that you can't compare to anything else in life. And this is what it's saying. We have to leave those things that we hold so dearly. Anything, and, and I may not quote the scripture verbatim. I think it was a, uh, a I'll just say one of the disciples says, uh, Lord, we have left all, mm -hmm. all to follow you. Well, Jesus didn't say, well, you didn't leave all. He said, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. He said, even if you've left all, right? Mm -hmm. He says, anything you've left, I'll replace it. Mm -hmm. So then that's the mindset that we have to have when we leave out the sheep behind. And Jesus even did it in a parable when he says, the good shepherd would leave the 99 for the one. So then we have to understand they left their sheep their herd to come and find the Messiah baby. Uh, again, just to uh, back up what um, teacher was saying, uh, he was talking about leaving mm -hmm. um, things behind. And uh, let me see if I can find that scripture, what he was talking about, to let you know he's not just making up yeah. stuff, he's just not just calling out stuff, but, it, but it's there. If you go to uh, Matthew chapter 19, uh, no, let me see. What did I, uh, no, did I get it right now? No, Ma Matthew chapter 4, I'm sorry. I did that same thing at home. <laughs> you go to Matthew chapter 4, and if you look at verses 19 through 22, I believe it is. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, he said, uh, I'm going to... Uh, no, that's not the one I want either. That's when he left it. Let's go to Matthew 19 and 29. There you go. All right, get it right in a minute. Get it right in a minute. Okay. Matthew 19 and 29 says, And everyone that has, and everyone that has forsaken house, mm -hmm. or brethren, mm -hmm. or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Right. So in other words, Jesus is saying, anything you leave, he's going to replace it and even give you more for what it is. Teacher said again that um, um, the, that, that leaving started in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And when he's talked about the shepherds again, what we have to understand, the Bible is, is a blueprint for us. The Bible has been, is an example for us to follow that we can see what was done, that we can receive the good, also in the, in the bad things that would happen if we err from what God is teaching us in his word. When the shepherds were doing their thing, as teacher was saying, they were guard, guard, uh, watching over their sheep. They were doing their thing until they heard a call. Mm -hmm. And when that call was made, they left doing what they were doing considering important to follow something greater and more important by following the voice of God, following the word of God. This is what we're doing. We're doing our own thing in this world. And then we hear God and we hear this message that we should leave those things that mm -hmm. we were doing mm -hmm. to follow him. Those things that are important, those things that mean so much to us. The Bible says in Genesis that when Adam and Eve mm -hmm. were together, that a man, a man should leave his mother, his father, and cleave to his wife. So other, even mom and daddy raised me and all mm -hmm. these different things. I must leave them 
and cleave to my wife, because guess what? Now, this is the important thing in my life. Mom and daddy, yes, I love you, but my wife will come now before you. And God is saying that we, he should become, he should be before everything that is in our lives, that he is the most important thing. He's not saying to us to get rid of them, but they should not come before him. Mm -hmm. Even when God made the call of Abraham, he said, leave your kindred, leave your homeland. Abraham got up and left all for a land that he knew nothing about, that God said, I will show you. But by, by faith and by obedience, he is following the voice and the command of God. And this is what the shepherds did. They went to worship him. They followed him. They heard his voice. You know, and, and, and there's something that was better for their life, something that was going to improve their lives. They went to follow it. Did they understand everything? No. Could they explain everything? No. But out of obedience, because they, they were looking, they were expecting. And this is what us, to us today, we're looking for something. We're expecting something. Sometimes it's not what we expect, but God, like with the, with the um, uh, 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 Peter and James, Peter and John, when they went by the temple mm -hmm. and the man was, you know, asking alms, the man was looking for something, but what they did, they gave him what he didn't expect to receive. In other words, he got more and got better than what he was looking for. We're looking for these temporal things, but God said, no, the things I have for you are eternal and everlasting. So, but what we must do is give up those things. In other words, we can have nothing meaning more to us than God. Mm. God must be first in our lives and foremost. God must become, must come before everything else in our lives. But he didn't say not to love them or care for them. Mm -hmm. They just cannot come before him. They cannot stop us from fulfilling what God has called us to do. They must be on the back burner and God must always be first. And again, uh, we, we do this because it is uh, the work of the Lord, but he shows us in his word. I mean, we're not just speaking these things, you know, because uh, and, you know, we have been uh, questioned, hmm. brought on the carpet. Why do you think you're right? Yeah. And people want to make it a personal thing that we think we're right. Well, uh, and I said, we do this because Pastor followed up on what I said with the word. I'm going to follow up on mm -hmm. what he said <laughs> with the word now, because that's what we should do. We should give you word. And, and uh Exodus uh, 20, starting at verse 1, it says this, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, mm. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Listen, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Listen, so we, we, we understand that uh, when we speak, when we speak the word of God what pastor was just saying God has to become uh, first in our lives he says no other God now you say well we don't we don't have no gods listen to what it says <laughs> thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images now listen so when you read that part graven images yeah we don't go in the woods and cut down trees anymore bring them home and fashion God's or fashion gods out of gold and silver um, because again when pastor went back to Acts when Peter was preaching and they went into the temple at the time of prayer he said listen what you want that's not what we have what we have is what you need and that's what this is but see because silver and gold mm -hmm. had a value to it but they're saying what we offer you has much more of a value so you said, well, we don't have graven images. Well, anything that keeps you away or anything that comes between you and the life that Christ wants you to live. You know, I mean, you, you, know, you didn't make that television in your house. Mm. But if it keeps you from prayer time, if it keeps you That's from right. reading time, it becomes mm -hmm. your God. And you have to understand that this is what I mean. Listen, times have changed. We're not living in the shepherd's time of life, but the application of the word still applies today. We just have to bring it in to today. That's why Christ says, I speak to you of earthly things because that's what you understand. And if you don't understand earthly things, I certainly can't speak to you about heavenly things because we've never been there. So we have to take it from God himself who knows all things. So, yes, there are things we have to leave. Yes, there is a walk that Christ expects for us to walk. 
always, as Pastor said, putting God first. Uh, we we, we, we uh, studied uh, about wisdom, and it says, you know, uh, that we ought to uh, always consider God first in everything we do, right? It says, we don't even know the way. Mm-hmm. God's mm-hmm. ways are not ours. It says we should always consult with him. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? It's a nice thing to be able to consult with God about little stuff. But we come to this conclusion, well, that's, we shouldn't bother God about that. <laughs> no. Uh, 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 no. No, he tells us. <clears throat> that's right. So then why not, uh, you know, why not utilize the gifts that he's given unto us? And show people that if we do what God calls us to do, God will always do what he says. Remember, like the teacher just said a little thing. Remember Proverbs saying, in mm-hmm. all thy ways, acknowledge all him, yes. and he will direct thy path. Also, Ooh. again, when we were talking about um, leaving and, and, and talking about following uh, and forsaking all, if you go to Matthew chapter 4 again and look at verse 18, we'll start there mm-hmm. and watch. And it said, and Jesus walked by the sea of Galilee, mm. saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left mm-hmm. their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he uh, saw others, two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father. Listen, he was there with their father working now, mm. mending their nets, and he, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Mm. So in other words, Jesus is saying, make us his first priority. Everything else is secondary, and we are following him. Because the thing about him, the thing about following him, the things that he has in store for us is eternal. The things that we have outside of God are temporary. They're not going to last forever. And what God is going to do is give us something God gives us peace here, Mm -hmm. and he gives us eternal peace in glory. So we're not waiting to receive all the benefits of God when we leave here. We're going to receive some now, but we must follow him. Will time, will pressures and things come in our life? Yes. And the only reason why they come, because the bodies are cursed. Remember, when when God cursed everything, and he cursed these bodies, so the pain, the suffering, and things that we go through is going through because of the curse. Jesus came to deliver us from the curse. Even though our bodies will go through, but we ourselves, Mm. we will be delivered. He will give us life eternal because guess what? These bodies are not us. These bodies are only the shelters or the temple. These are not us. These bodies are only the shelters or the temple that we live in. Though they may go through something, God will deliver us because this is what Israel was looking for. Israel was looking for an earthly godly king on a horse with an army coming behind him to, to rescue them from the oppression of the Romans. Guess what? When the earthly king delivers us from our oppression, guess what? Later on down the road, we're going to have some more. But when Jesus delivers us and we follow his directions and we do what he says, no matter what comes our way, it will not get the best of us. Why? Because we're under the protection of God. As long as we follow his direction, we follow his commandments, we are protected. We are under his shadows and he will protect us. Yes, things will happen to these bodies, but our souls will be in God's hand. And even in, when things do happen in these bodies, the Bible says this. Many are the afflictions of the mm. righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all, through them all, in them all. So other words, we will go through, but guess what? God is always there with us to deliver us. Yes, we may hurt a little while. We may uh, suffer some things. We may lose some things, but God said that he's still there with us. And it shows us in the body and in the presence of Jesus Christ. When he came to deliver us, he lost stuff. He forsook things, but guess what? God carried him through everything, through the pain, the suffering, and look at what happened to him in the end. And that's what he's saying to us. If we follow him, our end is going to always be better than our present time we're going through right now. So as the shepherds left the most valuable things to them at that point in life to find the Christ child, that's what we have to do. We have to value salvation more than anything else in our lives. Yes, God will bless us with things in life. But when those things have more value mm-hmm. than what Christ has done for us in his coming, in him offering salvation to those who seek it. Uh, you know, we, we studied uh, the lessons of those that were seeking Christ's appearance, both Anna and Simeon, who were in the temple of God. 
doing the work of God. Nothing was more important for them than to lay their eyes on the Christ child. And, uh, you know, this is what it's all about. You know, uh, it, it says that thou shall have no other God before me, but it also says that you should love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength, right? He has to be the guiding force of your life. So, yeah, we're going to leave things, but, but you have to ask yourself, if the shepherds left their sheep, which was their mm -hmm. uh, 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 livelihood, mm -hmm, right. if they left their livelihood to come and find salvation, uh, it, 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 it has to mean something to you. You know, I mean, there are a lot of people who assemble in churches uh, Sunday after Sunday. You know, and, and listen, yeah, we're just uh, backwoods preachers, you know, down home boys, you know. But listen, I'm going to tell you until you get it. If your preacher is not preaching to you what the word of God says about salvation, listen, you can keep your own hand. <laughs> Don't give your hand to the preacher. <clears throat> keep your own hand. You know, that's only a beginning of, of leaving things. You have to come to a new mind. It says you have to be renewed inside, in your mind, you know, to understand that there's something greater. When the Bible says repent, you know, that's the, that's the message. I told you, I don't, care, I don't care all the great messages and sermons your pastor preach. I don't care. I don't care that he can lay his hands on you and you recover when you're sick. I don't even care if God anoints him and he raises the dead. If he doesn't tell you about <laughs> repenting, being baptized in the name of Jesus, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking with other tongues, he is cheating you. He's robbing you. You've got to leave. See, oh, well, that's where my mama was born. You better leave it. <laughs> you know, that's where all my roots are. You better dig them up. You know, you got to go back now to the preacher. What did the preacher say? There's a time and a season, and a season for what? Everything. Everything. He said, sometimes you better pluck it up. Mm -hmm. You got to move to where your soul is going to be fed with life-giving words. This is the word of God. And listen, we, we, we love to be around family. You know, we do. We love it. But if family's taking you down, you might want to do what the shepherds did. Leave them. Leave them. That's what God told the man. That's what God told the woman. That's what God told Abraham. That's what, you know, when he went down in, in, in to Egypt because they were getting so comfortable down there. They had to do what? Leave. And that's what God is calling us to do. When, when he becomes the most important thing in our lives, then nothing will hold us back from leaving it and coming to Christ. Again, Pastor read to us from Matthew 19. What will God do if you leave all that stuff? No, 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 listen. If you leave a car, God might not give you a car. But how do you compare a car with eternal life? Mm -hmm. and, and the sad thing is, see, we often miss. You're going to have eternal life. Right. <laughs> Regardless. Regardless. Yes. You're going to have eternal life. So you say, well, I am going to live forever. That's exactly right. You're right. But do you want to live that life in peace or in turmoil? That's what the question is. And if you want to live in peace, then you have to live according to the word of God. We have to have the mindset of the shepherds and the mindset of the wise men in our pursuit for God to mm -hmm. honor, to worship, and to uh, uh, obey him. The shepherds, you know, they, they, they left their sheep and they, they um, heard the angels' voices, and they, they followed the instruction of the angels. The wise men were astrologers. They heard about this thing, and mm -hmm. they, they were looking. They were looking, and they saw the star, and when they saw it, they left everything, country, family, land. They left everything to follow the star, to follow or to find this phenomenal thing that they were looking for. Uh, and, and the thing about it says now, it wasn't an easy journey. It wasn't one day, it wasn't one night. It said they had the mindset to keep on searching and to keep on looking until they found, to define what they were looking for. That must be us with God. We must keep on searching and looking till we find him. 
And then it says now, and they brought gifts to honor and to worship him. Because we got this Christmas story backwards and we got it messed up. John 3.16 says, and God so loved the world, he gave us, he gave us the mm -hmm, gift. Mm -hmm. He gave us his son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So he has made this gift available for everyone. It's up to us whether we receive it or not. All he asks in return now, see, and the thing about it is, we're so busy about giving gifts to one another that we fail to give the gift to the person who's having the birthday. So if we say this is Jesus' birthday, then we should be giving gifts to him. So when the wise men came, they brought gold, frankincense, and mirth and gave unto him. Our, our uh, a gift today is not the gold, the frankincense, or the mirth. It's in Romans 12 and 1. Our bodies, mm -hmm. a living sacrifice mm -hmm. that we give ourselves to God, that we be pleasing unto him. This is what God is asking for. He's not asking us for anything unreasonable. He says, which is your reasonable, reasonable. service. Mm -hmm. Again, we talk about the Holy Ghost, and we talk about the power of the Spirit, the necessity of having God's Spirit. The, and, and we talked about the law, that the law was weak in the flesh. We couldn't live up to God's standards in this flesh because the flesh was weak. We could not honor his law. But then he gave us the spirit, his spirit that came that would give us life and would give us the strength and give us the power to live according to God's law. Now, the spirit's not going to force us to live. It's not going to make us to live. We must humble ourselves and be submissive to God's spirit. And when we submit ourselves to God, the spirit will lead us and guide us and direct us. Just like uh, Israel followed, the, star, followed the, the smoke and followed the, uh, the cloud and the fire. That it will lead us. And what we must do is follow. We should not rebel about, well, you know, hey, Lord, that way it don't look so good. That, that way it look kind of dangerous. No, God knows the way. And every way that he leads us, there's a purpose and there's a reason why he's leading us that way. And every way that we go that God leads us, we're going to learn something, we're going to grow, and we're going to get more wiser, get more stronger, and more knowledgeable who God is. Because God knows what's best for us, that we know is what's for ourselves. So in our leading, in our following, we must learn to trust him. Because why? God has our best interests at heart. So whatever he does, he does for the best. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He's not going to lead us into a place where we're not going to be able to come out. But wherever we are, God is going to be there with us. And while we are there, he's going to be teaching us that while we are learning, we're going to know just about, learn more about who God is, what God can do. And that we're not going to just keep it to ourselves because the Bible says in our lesson, if we have something good, we're going to share with others about the goodness of God and what he is doing for us in our lives. In, in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter two mm -hmm. and um verse one it says therefore we ought to give yes. the more earnest heed to the things, to the things which we have heard lest yes. at any time we should let them slip, let them slip and mm -hmm. end up where we were but listen it goes on in verse three it says if you've heard mm. and you don't take heed to them it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, and that's all we preach. I say Sunday after Sunday, we have one message, and that is the message of salvation, the good news. Yeah, we're talking about the birth of Christ today. Understand? But after Christ, you know, Christ is not a baby in a manger, mm -mm. and it's not even important. What is important is that he was born. You know, we won't even get into the argument of what day, whether it was in December, whether it was in, in March or April. It really doesn't matter. What matters simply is Christ came in the flesh, in, in the way of sinful flesh, but without sin. This is what's important to us. And when we hear it, you know, we need to come to it, yes. But after Christ's birth, Christ grew. Mm -hmm. I mean, it says from the time the wise men came to the time that uh, uh, the, uh, no, from the time that the shepherds came to the time that the wise men came, Jesus had already started his growth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when they, when the, when the wise men saw Jesus, he wasn't the babe in the manger. He said he was a young lad at that time. And again, their speculation of how old he was. It really doesn't matter. But what they did, they humbled themselves, as Pastor said. They uh, came and bowed mm -hmm. to the child. They recognized that this was the Messiah that they had been waiting for. They brought the best. They brought the best of what they had. Mm. You know, it, but, but listen, 
Um, and that's why we read from Malachi this morning, 3 and 10, because the best of what we have <laughs> is what God gives us. We, we don't have nothing. The best of what we have is what, we, what God gives us. And then, you know, and, 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 and listen, if you allow me to say this and, and try to understand it, the best of what we have, you know, God let us keep 90% of it. Mm -hmm. He only asked for 10% back. I'm not talking about money. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about our lives. We, 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 don't, we don't eat, sleep, drink. Now, we always, that's why the psalmist says, let the words of my mouth, mm -hmm. the meditation of my heart, be accepted in our sight. Because if Christ is in you, you should always be thinking on his goodness, always in thanksgiving. I mean, and Pastor said, worship ain't running around with your hands up in the air, hallelujah. Hall no, let me tell you something, because you'll be in jail <laughs> because somebody, or in some institution because somebody thinks you're crazy. No, there is a proper place for that, for that kind of worship. But this worship is when people see a different life. That's when the Bible says, after you've been buried in his name, you rise to walk into the newness of life. We're not, we're not trying to live with shepherds and wise men. Mm -hmm. we're not, I don't have any gold or frankincense or myrrh, but what you bring is the most valuable thing that you have. And that is what God has given you. He, you know what? My, you know, I, I, I studied the word of God, you know, and for the longest, you know, and until it became clear to me, this, in Genesis, when it says, and God blew the mm -hmm. breath of life into man. L mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. We were nothing but a, a form of clay. And God blew the breath. So I went around all my life thinking that I was breathing. <laughs> that I had life because I was breathing. No. I have life because God breathes into me. And that's what the spirit does. It breathes into you and gives you life. And listen, you know, you say, well, I draw in a breath. No, God breathes a breath into you. And then when uh, God allows you to release it, he breathes another. And if he doesn't do that, we're nothing. This is the best that I have. He's given it to me. And let me tell you something. It's not worthy of him. It's not worthy of him, but because of his abundant mercy and because of his grace, he accepts us like we are. You understand? If we come and say, Lord, I'm sorry. If we come and say, Lord, save me. And then we seek him for that power that works in us. Pastor quoted uh, last Sunday, I think, in, in our lesson or even, you know, some, I tell you, things run together. Mm -hmm. Either in his message, you know, from Ephesians 3 and 20. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to let this thing work in you. And it'll work through you. And it'll work out of you. You know what I'm saying? And it'll work all around you. And it'll begin to touch those. That's what these shepherds were touched by what uh, the, the, the very occurrences of what happened. And that's when they moved to Christ. And that's what we have to do. Leave it. Leave it behind. Bring the best of what you have. That's what he asked us to do. Seek his face. You know, again, it says, and we can bring our desires. We can show him our lives are not going to be based on what makes us happy, but based on mm -hmm. what makes him happy. And our lesson says, we can worship with the shepherds when we leave our sinful past behind mm -hmm. and submit to his will for our lives. We worship with the wise men when we bring him gifts of faith and obedience and show him we trust him and submit our lives to him. You know, even as I was studying this lesson and, and, what, I, what, what, and what I do sometimes is put ourselves in the story, in the, what's going on. And if you go back a little bit, remember when Herod found out mm -hmm. that Jesus was coming or that this new king was coming, he wanted to destroy him. And, uh, and to back up what Pastor uh, Ella Witherspoon was saying, that when the wise man came uh, and, and uh, Herod heard about the baby, he weren't killing newborn babies anymore. Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. was killing those two and three years old. So in other words, that man Christ had grown from a baby, not in the manger anymore. The Bible said he was in a house. Mm -hmm. So when the wise men came, he was in a house. But Herod wanted to kill him. Why? Because uh, Herod 
was in fear of his earthly kingdom mm -hmm. being overtaken by this young lad. But you have to understand, there's another uh, uh, sense working behind the scene. The devil was trying to destroy yes. him because yes. he knew what Jesus was about to bring about, not just a temporary earthly uh, salvation, but a, a eternal salvation. And the devil wanted to destroy that. So what you have to look at now, that because the devil knew what Jesus was going to uh, bring and what was going to happen, the wave that was going to start, he was trying to stop it before it got started. So now what we have to look at now, we have to look at us as being, in a sense, like Jesus. And what I mean like that, by that is the devil know the potential mm -hmm. that is in mm -hmm. us when the Holy Ghost comes. So what the devil wants to do, because it says in John, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God has blessed us to be uh, 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 successful. God has blessed us to be able to help others and to help others not to be ignorant about who he is, but to give them an understanding about who he is. The devil knows that if we allow God to bless us, the devil knows that if we submit our lives to God, what a force that we <coughs> will be to the kingdom of God. So what the devil does, he's trying to stop us even before we get started. So these things and these, try these temptations and these wars that come up against us, it is for God to show us who he is, but it's the devil trying to stop us from ever recognizing and realizing who God is. And what we are to do is to share what God has done for us. For those that are, are ignorant, those that are still sitting in darkness, we are to bring light to them, to bring an understanding and a clarity about who Jesus is. That's what Jesus was doing to the world back then, to bring an uh, understanding of who God was, to bring an understanding of who his kingdom or what his kingdom was going to do. And he said, at one time he said, my kingdom is not of this earth. Mm -hmm. He said, my kingdom is in heaven. He said, I can call 10,000 angels right now. They can come and yes, fight for me. Yes. But this is not my kingdom. So in other words, he's saying to us, don't get so attached to what's here. This is only a temporary thing. The Bible tells us, even when asking, don't look at the things that are temporal for what we can see. For the things that we see are temporal. And the things that we can't see are eternal and everlasting. So that way our eyes should be fixed on the things that we can't see, but by faith, trusting in God. And I want you to understand something. God got us in his hands. God is leading us. God is directing us. God has called us to this army, and he says and he, he has called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. So we should not be concerned about the affairs of this life, but we should be worrying about pleasing the one who has called us from darkness to light. So now what we're doing now, we're trying to spread the same good news that Jesus did, that we are the forerunners of now, and we understand that Satan and his powers are going to try to stop us from carrying on what Jesus started, because John, uh, he said in John 17, Father, I come back to you now, but I leave them in this world, in so many words, to carry on the work that I started. So now we're trying to finish up a, a work, a completer work, that, not that Jesus didn't complete it, mm -hmm. but he left work mm -hmm. for us to do, that we do what he did, that we may share this good news with others. And that's what this Christian season is all about, sharing the good news, letting us know that salvation has come, letting us know that this is not our final destination, letting us know that death has no dominion over us, death is not our final act, that Jesus came to let us know that we have life beyond the grave. But all we have to do is submit unto him, follow him, allow him to be Lord of our lives. But in order for that to happen, we must give him a gift. <laughs> and that gift is we must give ourselves to him that he will perfect and perform that which is in us. So when we talk about uh, this lesson and understanding what it's all about, it is not really about mm -mm. <laughs> shepherds and wise men. It is about a way of life, what we should be coming to understand, how we should come before the Lord to worship him. Uh, for it says, for unto us a child is born. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. He's been born. But when we follow the ministry of Christ through uh, the gospel writings, uh, he is some 30 plus years old now. And he ascends into heaven. So he's not a babe in a manger. He's not even the child in the house. He is not even the Christ that walked on the earth. He is sitting on the right hand of God the Father, which is, you understand, that God was always sitting on the throne. What came forth was the word of God. Remember that word that spoke from the beginning, and let there be. Well, in Genesis 19, it says in his name is what? The word of God. So that's what we're talking about. And what did he leave for us? He left the instructions through the power of his word. And if we become obedient 
to his word. Do what he has required of us. Come into salvation. You know, we, we can't live on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. The fence is a divider. Fence is to keep something in mm -hmm. or to keep something out. You know what I'm saying? And, and there's no sitting on the fence with God. You're going to be one or the other. It is about making up our minds to live for him and understanding that we're not giving up anything that he didn't give to us in the first place. Valuing. Bring the best you've got. Bring the best you've got. Valuing the work that Christ has done because from... From Acts on through the, well, the book of Acts tells us of the power of the Holy Ghost and how it transforms lives if we receive that power. And that's why uh, the Lord told Nicodemus, it is necessary, it is of great necessity that you receive this. And after you receive the Spirit of God, uh, you know, from, from a, a, after the book of Acts, we go into the churches. It doesn't say that all your problems are going to go away. <laughs> Mm -mm. But each one of those churches who had problems, they went with the word of God to help them correct them. Help them to be able to walk in a better place. And if we do this, God will continue to bless us. Please, this lesson is about our worship for the great work of salvation that God has done through his son and our savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Some years ago, our teacher uh, preached the message, the unopened gift. Right now, as some of us, we have in our dens or living <laughs> rooms, whatever, we have our Christmas trees set up. We have all our gifts under the tree, and some have already, and some are waiting for the time to open up their gifts to see what they have gotten for Christmas. A lot of times we go for the biggest boxes, the prettiest boxes, and those are the things we, we grab to open up to see what we got inside of them. But he told us, in this gift, it's not the biggest. Hmm. It's not the prettiest. It's not the one that's most attractive. But it's the gift of eternal life under the, that tree. You might not see it with your natural eyes, but there's a gift there that's mm -hmm. waiting to be opened. And the gift has been made available to us all. Oh. Now, it's up to us, brother, we want to open the gift. But teacher said again, sometimes if I open this gift, I can't go this way. I can't do this. I can't have, I can't, I can't, I can't. But that's the ignorance of knowing what the gift is. The understanding of the gift, if I open this gift, everything that I can have, the things that I can do, the things that I mm -hmm, can achieve. Mm -hmm. is, this gift is about life and life eternal, the abundance of life. This, this, this gift helps us to live during stressful times. It helps us to live when the, like the world is in chaos. It helps us to live when we have lost loved ones, when we have lost jobs, when we have lost our health. This gifts help us mm. to live beyond and past that. It does not wash it away, right. but it gives us the strength and the power and the ability to live with what is going on. That's what Christ brings to, ourself, brings to us. A lot of us, without that gift, there are many people today that are killing themselves. There are many of the people that are lost. There, there are many people with, not, with no hope. Why? Because they don't have the gift. But you have to understand what the gift is all about. Hmm. When you don't see, it, 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 you can have the gift, but if you don't have the understanding, you still miss out on what the gift has come to do. How do I know? I've been there. I was missing out till I, till I come to understand the, the, what the, the gift was all about. I come to understand the power of the gift, and I come to understand what God's purpose was for my life. That's why I say, now. Nah, he is not unto him that is able to do it exceedingly, mm -hmm. abundantly, mm -hmm. above all you can ask or even think, but it's according to the gift mm -hmm. that is in you. So in other words, we can do some extraordinary things when we allow the gift to work within us. It doesn't stop things from happening, mm -hmm. but the things that happen won't destroy us because of the gift that we have in us. Mm. That's why Peter and John mm. said, <laughs> look on us. Yeah. But what they were saying is look beyond us. You know what I'm saying? Silver and gold. We don't have that. We don't have that. But we've got something more valuable. It says, but such as we have, we'll give it to you. Uh -huh. And they just put their hands out mm -hmm. and says, rise up and walk. You know what I mean? That's not the only miracle wrought through those who trust God, who believe in him. That's why the word of God says, and greater works. Mm -hmm. Greater than these shall you do. 
when you solely depend on me. Worshiping God is about trusting him. Uh, as pastor always remind us of messages that come, um, you know, I have to remind him. I was telling my brother, you know, sometimes you preach something, uh -huh. and then pastor had to remind me of what uh -huh. the Lord preached through uh -huh. me. Yep. And I said, now that's <laughs> awesome. But he preached a message, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and uh, relevant. That's how we are. He said, I believe God. Mm -hmm. But I don't trust him. And you say, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I believe God. I know who God is, and I have the Holy Ghost. But if I truly trust God, then I'm going I'm, I'm mm -hmm. to just give up, you know, because it's not going to be about the way I think it ought to be done. God has, you know, the Bible says his ways are not ours. God has a specific way to do what he wants done mm -hmm. because, and, and we like to say it, but it's for our good, but it's for God's glory until God starts looking for some glory and then you start crying. Mm -hmm. No, we have to trust him that he will go beyond what we can think, what can, we can imagine. We have to trust him to know that God didn't come into this world to give his life that we would be destroyed. No. That wasn't his purpose. He did it so we could live. So, but we live only through worship of obedience. And if we would be obedient to what God has called us to do, we can rest. And Pastor say sometimes it takes us a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when we get there, mm -hmm. when we get there, it's not so easy for the devil to steal anymore because we'll trust God. As we look to the Lord, Father, it's in your precious name, Lord Jesus Christ, we come to say thank you. And I want to thank you for your patience yes, and your long Jesus. suffering towards us. Yes. I want to thank you, God, because I didn't always know this. I didn't always understand what it was, what Christmas was all about, because I thought it was about Santa Claus. I thought it was about gifts and things of that sort. But it's about, it, it is about the gift that you brought into our lives, oh yes. God, to give us life. And I thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to learn about who you are and what you are able to do Good. in our lives. Good. Bless us, O oh God, that we do not keep this to ourselves, O oh Lord, but we share with others that which we have received from you. And Lord, bless us as parents, O oh God, that we give our children the truth, O oh God. Not the myth of Christmas, but we give them the truth about Christmas, about who you are. It's not about a, a white man with a white beard and a red suit, God. It was all about your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He didn't look so good. Because you even said in your word, God, even when we look at him as though we turn our, hit our faces for him. But Lord, he went through all of this that we may be where we are today. Now, Father God, bless us with an attitude change and a mindset change, oh God, that we recognize this season is all about you. Let us not be so, so commercialized, oh God, that we are thinking about buying gifts and shopping and all this, God. But Lord, Lord God, bless us that we take time right sure. where we are. Take time from what yes, we are doing, Lord, yes. just to tell you thank you. thank you. Thank you for family. Thank you for friends. And thank you for the gift of life. And, Lord God, bless us, God, that we humble ourselves, that we will give back to you what you have given unto us, Lord God, that we give our lives to you, that you will make it better for us even while we live down here on earth. Father, do it for your glory and do it for your honor. For it's in Jesus' name we ask you of these things. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faults for the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. So the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now henceforth and forevermore. For it's in Jesus' name that all God's people say together, Amen. 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 Again, as always, we say peace unto you. And we do wish you a joyous day today and even throughout this season. We hope you are safe, but we hope with all that is in you, you remember what the seasons of joy is all about. And that's giving your life to Christ. We bless you. We ask for your continual prayer as always, that you would pray for us even as we keep you in prayer. Uh, and if it is God's will, we will see you next year. Next year. Yes, right. Next year. <laughs> if it's God's will. And we pray that yeah. it is. Keep us in prayer. Amen. We say peace. Amen. God bless you.